welcome back to my channel, Beta Stories. So today I am going to be doing a review of the Silver Cross Wave Travel System. Now this is a travel system that we have used with our little one, Avery. She is now 18 months old. I don't know how time has managed to fly so quickly, but we have used this travel system day in, day out since she was born, and we have thoroughly enjoyed it. So we have used all the components that come with this travel system. So here you can see we have the car seat. This also comes with the ISO base, which is usually docked in the car. So that's really handy, and I will talk you through all the pros and cons of each of the elements as we go through. But you've got the chassis, the car seat, you've also got the bassinet and the seat unit here. So this is the seat unit that she's currently in, but let's kind of go through everything and I can tell you all the the good points, the bad point, and the niggly things that I've encountered with using this travel system on a daily basis. So first of all, since it's already docked, let's talk about the car seat. This is the car seat that we brought her home in from the hospital. We had it all kind of set up um, as I was kind of nearing, obviously, the, the due date, and this was super, super easy for us to just kind of put her into it. And it's a, I think, a five piece or maybe a three piece um, safety harness or seat belt. And it's got, for your newborns, it's got lots of different um, cushion inserts which come with the car seat. So I really like this. Um, as you can see, it is some of the stuff out there but yes as you can see the car seat is adapted into the sachet it does come with um, different adapters so you will need these adapters for you to adapt it into the sachet whereas the bassinet and the seat unit you don't need any extra components you don't need any extra adapters so that's really handy so with the car seat, I do have two negative points, of which the first one being it's quite tricky sometimes to dock or undock the car seat from the adapters. And I would say that if you have the car seat completely empty, so no baby, it's fine, uh, it's quite a light car seat, so you, you know, it's not gonna be a struggle in any way. However, if you have a baby, a newborn, it's most likely also not gonna be an issue because your newborn, your bundles of joy are generally speaking quite light. But as, you, as they get a little bit older, and she was in this car seat for her first 12 months, so towards, I'd say, when she was like, 9, 10, 11 months old, 12 months old. Getting this docked into that with her in it wasn't the easiest. And the reason being is because you've got to eject the, each side separately. And how I found it is that once you had ejected one side using this black button here, right you would take this out the baby would be in it usually it would be like that it would be out and then you would do the same to the other side and then as you do that this bit would slot back in with the weight of the baby and so sometimes i would struggle doing the left and right and try to do both at the same time and then yeah it is it can be a bit fiddly i think maybe I just hadn't perfected the skill, uh, the manoeuvring of taking, doing the left and the right at the same time and hoisting this um, car seat out. But that would be my one thing. 
I have seen some designs on some other brands of buggies whereby to eject the the car seat out of the chassis and or adapters, the button is actually on the handlebar of the car seat. And so you would literally, I've seen some videos whereby you would hold and like hold the button on the handlebar and you can just lift the lift the car seat up because it would all be ejected. And I think that is probably a better design versus this. However, it wasn't like a massive deal breaker for us or anything. We still kept using this car seat until she turned one because I think the advisement is that babies are in like a bucket kind of car seat um, until they're at least one before they kind of upgrade into like the older like 360 swiveling ones or like the toddlerish ones so um, we still have her in this it's just yeah you just need to wriggle it and jiggle it a little bit sometimes the only other thing i would say about the car seat as a negative is that the sunshade as you can see is quite shallow and i don't understand why they would have done, designed this kind of sunshade. It doesn't really act as a sunshade at all. It looks pretty and it's great, but if she's in the car, we found, and we have no privacy glass in the back, we found that when she was docked in the car in her ISO base unit, then, and the sun kind of shone through into the back of the window, she got very hot and, and she got quite uncomfortable with the sun on her. So what we ended up doing is buying these like pocket blinds that kind of like you go over your um, back passenger windows. So, and that was fine, but it would have been a bit more helpful had the design for the car seat sunshade be similar to this, whereby it kind of goes all the way down and like fully, and even this one, you can see, fully protects and shields the baby. So I, I don't know why <laughs> that one doesn't have the same effect. So, but that's like a niggly thing. In terms of ejecting the car seat in and out, that's a little bit of a bigger, bigger thing. But like I said, that could just be a me thing and not a everyone else thing. Let me show you how to eject the car seat out of the sash. So here at the front you can see there is a grey button and a black button and that comes on each side. And the black button is what you need to eject the car seat out from the adapters. So you need to use your left and your right. And then here you have it. The car seat is taken out. As mentioned, yeah, you've got all these really, really nice um, cushion inserts that kind of hold the baby upright, especially when you're first taking her home from the hospital like we did in this. And she just seems so like floppy. So um, yeah, the inserts really do help um, for those initial one, two months. And then to take the adapters out of the sashi, that's when you use this gray button here. So the grey button takes it out and then you've got your left and right. So your left and your right are clearly labelled and then it just makes it easy for you to dock and know which side is for which. So moving on next to the bassinet. We really, really liked this bassinet. So this bassinet is what Avery slept in every single night. We had two of these. So we had one which we kept on a stand, which is a silver cross stand specifically for the bassinet. And that was her bed at night time. And we placed that next to our bed. So effectively it was like a next to me kind of situation and bassinet. Um, 
she stayed in this, sleeping upstairs in our room until she was about four months old. And then we had to transition her into her own room at that stage and into her own cot. But we used the one upstairs solidly for, as mentioned, four months. It, we used it for her day naps and her bedtime as well. We also had this one, which is the one that we took out in the stroller with us when we were out walking around, going to the park, going to run errands. But when it wasn't docked into the sh chassis, we actually had this on the floor, in the TV room, or on the sofa. And because it is a solid structure, it doesn't like fold down or anything and the base also has extra air vents so it is certified for overnight sleeping um, we found this just really really good uh, it worked really well as her bed at night but also something quite comfortable to have like day naps and while she did have most of her naps upstairs in our bedroom and we would have the baby camera on her and then go about our day. If we wanted her downstairs to nap with us, then this was nice because we could like transport this wherever we wanted from room to room and provided we rested this on a flat and secure surface, we knew that she was going to be safe. So um, yeah, we really like this and we use this every day for as mentioned the first four months. So to dot this in and out, you just line up the left and right sides and it just slots into place. Just as simple as that. And so if I turn this around, you can see that essentially you've got your hood and it is a really, really good sunshade. So um, it covers all the way up and over. At the back, you've also got a slot for ventilation, which is this mesh, mesh fabric here. And if you wanted to take the entire top off, you could do that quite easily as well. Um, taking any of these, um, like, covers and hoods off is super easy because they're all just kind of attachable and detachable by magnets but also velcro so that did make it super easy so if you're having a hot day one day and then you're having a windy cold day the next it's not hard to kind of rip off and then pop back on just like this but yeah, really, really enjoyed this. Um, and I think she had many, many good sleeps in this bassinet. So to take this off, you would use these half moon buttons here. There's one on the right and then the left side and you like squeeze them and then just again, you just lift it up and then we have it. I would say that with the bassinet, you probably wouldn't want to do what I just did with your baby in it, um, unless, again, they were newborn and very, very light. As they get heavier, it's, it is not the easiest to align the left and right when you've got a heavy weight in there, but and I'm not sure if this handlebar is designed to hold the weight of the bassinet with the baby inside. So just wanted to flag that. We never did, we always had Avery out when moving this in and out and things like that, so. And then moving on to the final piece, which is the seat unit. So, with the seat unit, you dock it just like that, left and right, or right and left, 
and at the initial stages from about six months you're supposed to have the child parent facing so facing you and this is how it's set up we again had no problems with this Avery transitioned very easily from the bassinet up until she was about four into this there wasn't much of an issue she's very supported in this and it seems very cushioned and comfortable there's padding in here so um, she, she really liked it and she still likes it now as mentioned she's still in this this is her daily pram we use it every day and um, we really like this because Again, when she was younger and sleeping a lot more, there are different levels that you can recline the seat unit back. And also, if I take the cover off to show you, the feet footrest can also recline. So it goes down one level and then another level. And then bring this back up. One level, and then you're up level. So again, you've got a middle level, and you go all the way up. There you go. And then the sunshade is very robust. It kind of covers covers everything. <laughs> and then the seat belt is again a three piece harness, I think that's what they call it. And that suits for us. Uh, she's still, bless her, she's still got it, we've still got it on the tightest setting for her. Um, but she's now on the middle level. So when she was first in this, we had her on this slot here. And now she's on the middle one, and then she's got the upper one, and then I think after that she'll be, she'll be too big for it. But, yeah. So we had her probably parent facing from six months through to about maybe 13, 14 months. And then after which we had changed her from parent facing world-facing. So this is world-facing, so she's not looking at the parents anymore, she's um, looking at the world. And the reason why we transitioned her from looking at us to looking out is because we found that she just got more and more restless looking at us and she was just getting more curious and wanting to look at the world, get the street, the shops the park, all of those things a little bit more. So, and this is basically our setup for her now, and she's 18 months old now. So she still uses this. This is her daily stroller that we use. Um, and she still, she does definitely find this comfortable. We don't really have any issues with, with it. Um, we really liked the fact that this was kind of really a robust and solid structure. The seat can recline as demonstrated, the feet can also kind of be adjustable, which we liked. With the hood, it's very, very good at covering all the way down. And also, as I showed earlier, there is the mesh ventilation, but also when the child is world facing, you have a peekaboo window at the top. So as a as the person pushing the stroller, you can look down into the baby or onto the baby and see how they're doing, if they're fussing, if they're crying, if they're sleeping, and that comes in handy as well. And this um, peekaboo flap is held down by a magnet, which I really, really like. However, it does mean that when you have it open, sometimes it just flips back down. And so um, it would be quite handy if there was another magnet to hold it open, Ooh, like that. 
but um, it isn't a, uh, a necessity, but it would have just been nice to have done that, I think. Um, the other things I really like about this buggy is the wheels, which I know sounds odd, but the wheels are really important. So these wheels are not air wheels, so they don't really puncture from my understanding. And these wheels are also big, which means it can roll over potholes, curbs, get you up and down curbs, driveways, in and out of shops really, really easily. Well, I've never really had an issue whereby uh, you get st because the width, the size of the wheels, you get stuck in a pothole. It would have to be quite a big ditch, a big pothole for, for this stroller and these wheels to get stuck in it. Um, the other things I would say, I really also like the basket. Now, the basket is a solid base. It's got like mesh sides, but it's a solid base. And I do like the fact that it is solid, it's sturdy, and it can hold a decent weight. We did, for laughs, um, put Fitzroy, our dog, who isn't the lightest dog, he weighs about nine and a half kilos, and we did put him into the basket when we were out one day. And he didn't enjoy it, so he very quickly jumped out of it but it does support his weight and that was a good to know because at the time we were thinking if the dog could go in the basket then maybe we can go into some shops without them coming over to us and saying no dogs allowed but um, that didn't really work because he didn't really enjoy it so um, that was a bit of uh, a no-no but it does hold a decent amount of shopping and as you can see it is a big opening. I know I've seen some reviews of strollers whereby the opening to get into the basket, to access the basket, is actually quite small. And some single to double strollers, the way that their system is, is that the second child sits behind the, the first child and basket essentially becomes their footrest so you can't really get much shopping in and out of your basket but this one isn't that kind of system it's really good if you do want to make it in from a single into a double what I'll do is I will put in some pictures of how you can configure it but it's a tiered system, it's a stadium system, which is again something that I was looking for in a single to double stroller, which means the child which is closest to the parent sits higher, and then the child which is further away sits lower. And so it's like a, t a stadium, I think that's what they call it, a stadium seating. And that was definitely something that I was looking for, and a lot of the single to double strollers, when I did my research, it was the reverse. So the child closest to you sat lower, kind of almost in the basket, and then the child that sat furthest away from you is higher. And I just never really understood that because I just think that the child which is at the bottom is just looking at the back of the seat unit of the other child. So I just didn't really understand and I, I didn't think that that was an ideal setup for, for when it becomes a double buggy, a double stroller. But we're not needing a double stroller. I just wanted to have a single to double to kind of future-proof ourselves. So that is basically a lot of the... Um, Pros. I've mentioned a lot of pros, not many cons. The, co the main con is definitely with the car seat, as I mentioned earlier. The other con, I would say actually is more of a big consideration. For us, I knew of this, but yet this is still the stroller I wanted. It didn't deter me from picking this stroller. But the other consideration I would say is the weight. Now this stroller is 
so heavy. So when you collapse it all down, you have to take the seat unit or the car seat or the bassinet and unclip everything, undock everything. And then you need to collapse it down to get it into the boot of your car. And it doesn't collapse down compactly. It is still a big, bulky thing that you need to then get into your boot. Um, we had an SUV before, we had a Range Rover Evoque and it basically took up the entire boot. The sh chassis would kind of roll in and then if we had this, we kind of had to angle it in a way whereby we could get it in and then close down the boot. If we had this, sometimes we would actually have to put the bassinet in the front passenger seat because we just didn't know where else it could go. Sometimes the way that we had configured the boot, if it had shopping and other little bits and pieces, we just couldn't fit it all in and that was annoying. So let me show you what I mean. So to unclip this, you just take the lever on the left and right and then it just unclips and that is super easy. And as your child gets older, you don't need to keep on unclipping and clipping things in. We, as mentioned, have Avery in that setup that I showed you earlier, and she's been in that since she was, well, she's been in this seat unit since she was 12 months, no, six months old, but she'd been facing forwards, world facing, since she was about 14 months old, and it had been in this kind of, set up ever since because we don't use the car seat anymore because she's got a different car seat because this is ideal from newborn up to 12 months so when she turned one we already had the other car seat that was given to us by a family member and she's in that one and that's like a 360 swivelly one and that's just really easy to get her in and out and this one she doesn't she grew out of at four months so we don't really undock and, and dock other components. It's just this seat unit and then the chassis. So to collapse down the chassis, let me show you. So to fold this down, you've got a lever over here and then you push down this lever and then you pull up these two bits and then it collapses down like that. And as you can see, it's still bulky, it's still big, and then you get this in your car, and then you kind of, as mentioned, the way that we do it, you kind of angle this, so it's like, kind of like this. And then we, <laughs> this takes up a lot of space in your boot, or it did for us, and we didn't have a small car. Um, so that's just something, and the weight of this is quite heavy, so I would say, for us, it's not a big deal because we leave this kind of upright in the front hallway. So whenever we are walking the dog, going to the park, going to the shops, we just stroll her out of the front door. However, if you are someone who you know lives in a block of flats and apartments, it doesn't have a lift or it has lots and lots of steps and stairs to get in and out, then this is probably not a great stroller for your living conditions in terms of it is just so, so heavy. And as mentioned, it is something that we did consider, but I was really adamant that I wanted a stroller system or a travel system that number one enabled me to dock and undock a car seat, especially in her first year of life, but also went from a single to a double and this does exactly that. And to be honest, yes it's heavy but at the same time I do think I probably wouldn't feel as re assured if this stroller system was super light and arguably flimsy because if it's supposed to support the weight of two children, arguably a toddler or a baby, or if you, if someone had twins, then like two newborns or two toddlers, then it needs to also support that weight. So I do understand why it is so heavy, but 
if you're hauling it in and out of your car and getting it into your boot, it has to go over a big lip in the boot, then again, this could be a bit of a struggle. But I do like this stroller system. I really, really love it actually. And if I had to, knowing everything I know now, if I was to remake my purchase and make my decision again on what stroller system or what travel system to get, I would still actually get this one. I am so happy with it. We have used, as mentioned, all the components and we ended up getting two bassinets uh, because we had one as her nighttime bed and it just worked perfectly. I really love it. And then to erect it, it was just a simple opening up this lever on the left hand side, which is this one here, and then just lifting up the handlebar and away you go. So let me just dock this back in to kind of show. And then normally we have the basket. Again, actually, one thing to mention about the basket, the basket's got two little pockets within the basket, which I love. And we hop in those, we have her little sh crocs and because sometimes we just take her out and she's not wearing shoes and then we get to a place and we're like, she wants to walk around now, so it's quite handy to just have shoes in the basket. But we also have some little board books, so again, when she gets a bit bored, gets a bit restless, I kind of pull these out. I've got quite a few actually. Yeah, I've got quite a few board books. Um, and they kind of keep her entertained for a little while. And in here, I will always, always never leave home without her snacks. Because one thing, her snacks really calm her down. Water, a flask of water also calms her down as well. So that, and actually we've got two pairs of shoes. They're both pink, they're both little light pink sandals. But yeah, and that's really good because you have these little pockets, so um, if you are closing down your stroller, you know that they're kind of nestled in there pretty safe, they don't want to fall out. If you're, if you're going over a ditch or a massive pothole, as, as I was talking about earlier, then you know they're not going to just fly out of the basket. And that, I think, wraps up today's video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like my video if you got something out of it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're new. I do have a few more product reviews that I want to be doing, things that we've been using with Avery that I found really helpful. So I will be hopefully doing those very, very soon. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.